Math 31, welcome to example two. So here we're going to find the first five terms of each arithmetic sequence. So a couple things to take note of right out the gate. Anytime you hear arithmetic sequence, I know there's gonna be a D involved. All right, there is some common difference. I mean, it'll change for each of parts A and B, but arithmetic sequence associate it with the letter D. All right, and that will change once we get to geometric sequences. We're obviously not there yet, but I just want you to start making this association. So if it says to find the first five terms, that means I want a sub one, a sub two, three, four, and five. So let's take a look. It says here, the first term is negative 14, and the common difference is six. So if I'm looking at this, I know a sub one is negative 14. They started me with negative 14. I need to find a sub two, three, four, five, and six. All right, well for a sub two, what I need to do is take this common difference and add it to my starting value. And just take note that since D is positive, my number should get larger. So I will take negative 14 and add six to it. So in this case, A sub two is negative eight. All right, so I'm going to add that common difference. And when you're adding a positive number, the terms in these sequences will get larger and larger. So A sub three must be my preceding term of negative eight plus six. So in this case, it's negative two. And I can continue on in this pattern because that's what an arithmetic sequence is. All you do is add or subtract, depending on whether D is positive or negative, add that common difference to each successive term. So I will do negative two plus six, which is four. And last but not least, we will do four plus six, which is 10. And there's my sequence. So I can go ahead, let me scooch this up just a bit so we can write out the terms in the sequence. So I could say here, give me one moment, there we go, that my sequence was, it started at negative 14, we went to negative eight, negative two, four, and 10. There is my arithmetic sequence, and you can see my common difference of six. All right, so here, they're straight up telling me a sub one, is 1.5, all right, so I have a sub one, 1. 1.5, now take note that my difference is negative, so I'm still going to add that difference to a sub one, but when you add a negative number, right, you're really just subtracting, so a sub two is one. And notice that when d is negative, your terms get smaller. So we have a sub three, that would be the preceding term of a sub two, minus 0. 0.5, so that's gonna be 0. 0.5. Right, to get a sub four, that would be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5, which would be zero. And finally, a sub five would be what? Zero minus 0 0.5, which is negative 0.5. So there are the five terms in my sequence, and I can just write that out with the squiggles. We started at 1.5, and I lost half a unit each time out. All right, and there is my arithmetic sequence. All right, and you can see, oops, I moved the paper there, sorry about that. And you can see that each time out, I'm just losing half a, half, half a unit in this case. I was gaining six units in that case. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and pick up our first major formula for arithmetic sequences. So I really wanna stress again, when you hear arithmetic sequence, first off, anytime you hear sequence, just a list of numbers separated by commas. When you hear arithmetic, you go to the D, all right? And I, uh, let's associate that. Arithmetic gets a D, sequence, list of numbers. All right, so with that, we'll, we'll flip over to the next page and we're gonna pick up our first major formula for an arithmetic sequence. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.